you, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for asking the question. Madam Speaker, prior to 2006, uh, about a decade before that, there was a large uh, proliferation of uh, training institutions offering all kinds of uh, diploma and certificates, backyard operators you know, throughout Fiji. And Madam Speaker, you may recall in those days, financial assistance to students undertaking tertiary studies were very limited, unlike what we have today. And parents used to withdraw the only social security to fund their children's studies in these backyard operators, offering all kinds of diploma and IT all over the place. And these qualifications were not recognized. Parents used to lose their social security money, thinking that the child's education and them getting job will become a social security, a security to them. That again didn't materialize. Madam Speaker, after 2006, the Bani Marama government decided first to establish a legislation to establish a higher education commission with the view to regulate, regulate these institutions, screen out the genuine ones. Wow. Wow. Screen, out the gen <laughs> screen out the genuine ones, Madam Speaker, to ensure that children's education, the product, final product is of high quality, to ensure that parents' money are not wasted. Madam Speaker, with that in 2008, 2008, a advisory board was established with the promulgation of the legislation for establishment of a higher education commission. Following, after two years, the full commission was established called the higher education commission. And we speak of the primary objective of regulating and registering, registering institutions which will offer higher education qualifications. Madam Speaker, there are key functions apart from screening and registering these training institutions. One is to uh, safeguard, as I mentioned, the interest of students, take in complaints, deal with them with respect to uh, you know, issuance of quality programs. There were cases, Madam Speaker, when these institutions should enroll students, take their tuition money and you know, uh, uh, fly out of the country. The Higher uh, Education Commission can now also go and investigate those complaints and even close those institutions apart from the self-accreditation institutions like University of South Pacific, Fiji National University, University of Fiji, there are other smaller institutions which are you know, uh, under the purview of Higher Education Commission in terms of actual quality assurance. And speaker, the Higher Education Commission also ensures that these qualifications that are offered out of these institutions are pegged at that particular level in the qualifications framework. And speaker, the qualifications framework has been developed and will be ratified by Fiji very soon, where Qualifications are offered from levels of 1 to 10, 10 being PhD, you know, 9 being you know, um, a master's, uh, 8 being postgraduate diploma, 7 being the uh, final year of degree, um, uh, 5 to 7 is the degree uh, uh, units, uh, level 4 is equivalent to foundation, level uh, 3 is uh, uh, um, uh, preliminary studies, etc. So start from level 1, so trade certificate 1, trade certificate 2, trade certificate 3, uh, trade diploma at level 4, etc. So Madam Speaker, it's the it's a job of the Higher Education Commission to ensure that all those institutions who are offering qualifications at different levels, you know, level one, level two, etc., are pegged at that level based on the learning outcome. And speaker, uh, so it's a job of the Higher Education Commission also to develop national standards for trade qualifications. And speaker, that's what the Higher Education Commission does. And speaker, uh, the Higher Education Commission also advises the government about funding allocation to various tertiary institutions. And speaker, uh, the um, Higher Education Commission also uh, fosters uh, linkage between the tertiary institutions and the industry to ensure that industry needs are met. So, Madam Speaker, the Higher Education Commission is the holdout database on all tertiary institutions in Fiji. If anyone, any stakeholder, the industry or students would want to know what qualifications are offered by various tertiary institutions, they can go to Higher Education Commission and the one stop place will get you all the programs offered by various tertiary institutions, where they're located, what are the tuition fees, etc. Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, overall, the primary objective of Higher Education Commission is to regulate those institutions you know, who are offering higher education programs in Fiji to ensure that these programs are pitched at that level, which in the qualification framework, which is internationally benchmarked and therefore allows for mobility of qualification between countries as well. Thank you. Thank you.
supplementary question, Honorable Yaveri. I thank the Honorable Minister for, uh, for his response regarding the uh, Future Education uh, Commission. But I would just like to know, and if you could inform this House as to how the board of the Fiji Education Commission is being appointed. Uh, they recently, because Dr. Rizidwa was there, and he was unceremoniously dumped before his exp uh, contact expires. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister. I enlighten the members on the other side. The appointment of board is done by the minister responsible upon cons um, uh, consultation with um, the Prime Minister. Uh, the uh, person uh, that the Honourable Member has named he has served two terms. He was the Executive Chairman, he has served two terms and therefore uh, as, per the legislation, as per the legislation, he was not allowed to serve a third term. So that's why his contract expired on the, on, on the day. So it was not uh, uh, dumb to accept that. Thank you. So please get the, get the correct information. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable There's a lot of public concern in the number of the de de degrees that are coming out now in the public. Uh, more so by the establishment of uh, the upgrading of the uh, Fiji National University and all those. What does the uh, role of the Higher Education Commission in relation to the vetting of the degrees? Because you go through some of the classrooms, very basic, but they all seem to be giving them, you know, uh, BSc and BAs. So how do you, how? you regulate and vet the degrees that are coming out now. Thank you, Honourable Minister. I just explained that uh, the larger tertiary institutions like uh, University of the South Pacific, uh, Fiji National University, University of Fiji, and uh, the um, uh, Fulton College, they are self-accrediting institutions. They have their own mechanism for quality assurance. For example, uh, the, that's most of the commerce programs the universities are required to undertake, uh, appoint an external reviewer to review once in, one, once in three years. Uh, so external reviewer will be appointed by uh, the uh, vice chancellor upon uh, recommendation from the dean of the college to come and take a detail. There's a process which I, will, I can you know, give it to him uh, later on, given my experience, that the external reviewer will come and examine, talk to the students, examine the course outline, the lecture notes, the exam papers. So once in three years, all programs are supposed to be done. Now, for programs that are longer than three years, for example, a medical program, you can't do it in once in three years. So, there's, you know, once in six years, it has been done by the College of Medicine at Fiji National University. So, for these uh, universities, which is self accrediting uh, universities, they have their own, uh, this is the procedure. For example, accounting degree is reviewed by Fiji Institute of Accountants and uh, some of the universities, both the universities, University of Fiji and uh, USP, they're also being uh, accredited by the Australian CPA. So, um, so these are the processes uh, uh, undertaken by the university to ensure that the program is internationally recognized. Now, mm -hmm. other than that, the other smaller institutions like, you know, um, IT institutions in, in town, uh, uh, they are uh, created by uh, the um, uh, High Education Commission who will hire experts to examine their programs. There's a list, Madam Speaker, list of uh, things that the institutions must have in order for the program to be offered. For example, you have qualified staff. Do you have the infrastructure? For example, if it is an uh, IT uh, program, do you have computer labs? Uh, you will find, Madam Speaker, uh, there are some institutions offering hospitality programs, for example, cookery. So the Education Commission will get an expert from outside from the, from the industry to go and examine whether they have their um, uh, production kitchen. Uh, if they're offering pastry program, they will go and examine whether they have a pastry uh, kitchen, uh, ovens, etc for hands-on training, Madam Speaker. They'll examine the program document to see whether they will have that number of uh, hours for industrial attachment. So without those, those programs cannot be approved for offering uh, to the students. Thank you.